Hello, and welcome to One on One Shots with B. Dave Waltaz. Today, I am joined by the Melee Damage. And what are we playing today, May? Uh, we're going to play some D&D, because uh, I play a lot of Vampire. So um, we're going to do some, some D&D today uh, instead, because I really only get to uh, do it when we play a Darkened Wish, and uh, very, very rarely during, during home games. That is true. Play a little dungeons and additionally a little bit of dragons. Maybe maybe I will find a way to work in both dungeons and also dragons into this, what we're about to do. Uh, if this is your first time watching uh, One on One Shots, this is episode three. Uh, we had Matthew Lillard for number one, Jim Zub for number two, Miss Melee Damage for number three. And I was going to say this at the end, but I'll say it now. But for those of you that showed up at the beginnings, uh, next week will be Mr. Luis Carrazzo, uh, Nines Rodriguez, Papa Pope. Potence. But uh, we will, I will, I will wait and tell you a little bit later in the week what game we will be playing with him because today the woman of the hour is Miss Melee Damage. Uh, now, again, the, the way we do these shows, it is equal parts interview in playing the actual game. I try to make it equal parts to greater or lesser success. It's really not my fault. These people are just too interesting when we're talking. I don't want to stop talking when we're playing. I want to stop playing. Uh, but first, let me ask you a couple of questions. So, uh, again, first, May, in the modern era, where might people know you from? Um, uh, well, how modern? How modern are we talking? Like, Dealer, dealer's choice. Recent 10 years modern? Or, like, you know. I, I was thinking more recent, like, one year modern. But you know what? You answer that however it formulates in your name. Uh, uh, one year, one year, and forgive me if you hear the rustling of my bags. I'm taking my beautiful new uh, level up dice out of their uh, wonderful little little bag, so I can use them here. Um, they're very beautiful. Watermelon, tourmaline, they're gorgeous. Um, the uh, uh, for the past year, let's see uh, a lot of a lot of vampire. Uh, we do uh, Long Beach by night. Um, I have been running uh, Denver by night. Um, uh, here on Q Times. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 what else? Um, uh, a Darkened Wish uh, playing D and D uh, with you, B Dave. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff on Q Times. I, I mean, all the Q Times. All the cool kids are on Q Times. I'm like clip that for a YouTube clip. We're like all the cool kids are on Q Times. Uh, so, um, yes, also while, while we're hyping Level Up Dice, I, I too have been recently blessed by Level Up Dice by uh, one set that I am a terrible garbage person and don't actually know the names of. I just went scrolling through and we're like, oh my God, I love it so much and was like, buy, give, um, which are these wonderful, fantastic things. I realize um, Diana and Emily and Justice and our friends over at Level Up Dice are screaming at the screen right now, the name of these things. Uh, but I also have my raised Egyptian marble dice, uh, which again, you know, I feel like I'm pleasing my ancestors right now with Egyptian marble dice, you know, like, I, I, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm like a sir now. I feel like that is like a proper like pinky up, like gentlemanly set of dice. Yeah. But uh, yes, you have been streaming and doing all of the things. You actually haven't been out in LA terribly long, though, correct? Uh, well, see, here's the thing. Um, way back, way back when, way, 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 way back when, um, like I, I grew up in so many different places because I've always been a musician. So I've spent a lot of time like in LA. Like I started coming out here when I was probably about like 15, 16. So for like maybe the past 15, 16 years of my life, um, I, like I'm familiar with LA, but I did just like finally move back, move back maybe about two years ago, two and some change. Which, you know, some people who know you from this modern era of streaming don't even necessarily know that you've been a professional entertainer for many years, international recording artist, uh, that they've got CDs with songs from you on them. Like, I think people may not realize just how much music you've put out over over the years. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that sometimes, though. Like, it's fun to, to drop that on people, like, because the... the and it's fun because sometimes people get me back and I'm like, I'll mention that I do music and they'll be like, yeah, I know. I, I, lo I love your music. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, Why did you say anything? So like, it's, it's one of those things. I like being able to go, yeah, that's me. And then people go, 
oh, oh shit. And then, you know, vice versa. I, I, I like when people surprise me like that too. It's just, it's really like, it's angsty chick music. So if me and my fans aren't going to be assholes to each other, what's the point? It's out of love. You know, it's true. So, so I'm not going to completely like bust out your dis discography or the things. It's like, is there anything that you would like to mention where people might hear you singing or do you prefer them to like find it organically to scour the interwebs? I'm uh, sure. You know, I've been talking about it more lately just because like I, I realized, yeah, I did the name change and people couldn't find me uh, very easily. But yes, I will go through the discography. Um. I uh, I did uh, uh, the, the very first soundtrack that I was on was actually um, Electra uh, from Marvel, um, and uh, my song is the song that plays during that wonderful little red fabricy ending credits. Um, There's a song called Wonder, uh, and then I had two songs on the Fantastic Four uh, soundtrack back when uh, uh, Captain America was uh, was. To, what's his name? Chris um, Evans. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that and Jessica Alba. That Fantastic Four. That's how long ago this was. And um, yes, that's uh, better Fantastic Four. I, I, I had two songs of that. And funny enough, neither one of them were actually in the movie. They were just both on the soundtrack. You know, right. they had Invisible Woman. You had Invisible songs on the soundtrack. Like it, it like it makes total sense. Total sense. We'll go with that because that makes more logical sense than anything else. Um, and then, uh, and then Disney uh, used one of my songs later on in um, in in one of their live action movies, uh, which which was good because my my mother always said, you know, you've made it when Disney uses your song, and I went, oh, sweet. So <laughs> that you felt accomplished. Well, a, one thing before I go on, because I don't know that I clearly said this. Again, we're talking here, but if you have any questions for me in chat, just type in capital question uh, in front of it. So uh, we'll pull them out later on. Like Usually when we go to break, I'll go through and kind of like dig through them. Uh, but uh, yeah, if there's anything you want to ask, capital question uh, there for her. Um, yeah, so you've actually climbed this hill twice now, both of climbing music to become accomplished there and now in the streaming world because again this is my turn to like toot your horn a bit you already have uh, done things at DD live uh you're on again an official DD stream with dungeons and dragons of dark and wish uh, again you are already dming your own uh stream right here on q times because again as we pointed out all the cool kids are on q times uh and y you've done all this in like a fairly short amount of time here in fact um so let me ask you two questions. When did you start playing role-playing games and when did you start running your own games? Uh, so playing fairly recently, um, all of my friends, all of my best friends, uh, all did role-playing games. All of my more uh, creepy goth friends, uh, of course, did Vampire and all of my uh, wonderful nerdy friends did D&D. Uh, &D. I always wanted to play, I never could. Uh, I could not join in any reindeer games. I was like, poor little Rudolph. Um, just because I traveled so much with music. So I was never really in one place uh, where I could like make a character and join a campaign. So like if I did play during that time at all, it was always like somebody else's character that wasn't there or like a pre-gen. Like I never really got the, um, I never got the opportunity to actually create a character that was my own and like, grow with the character and like complete a campaign that never got to happen uh and uh that so pretty much like when i got out of here when i got out here and when i met you b dave uh you kind of uh were the one that started to uh, teach me how to play and i appreciate you for that and thank you very much and i like how you tooted my horn to set me up to toot your horn um <laughs> and then, what, what hmm? secondary tooting <laughs> secondary tooting but yes uh <laughs> it was indeed so i learned uh to really actually play by playing with you guys and uh of course uh b dave you only really play on stream so of course i learned how to play on stream 
That is that is true. But to stream and Patreon, and you have your own Patreon where you run your own games at patreon.com forward slash melee damage. Hashtag mm-hmm. plug, hashtag check her out. Um, yeah, you're right. Like, I don't do home games. Like, if it's not a Patreon game or on a stream, I'm like, yeah, nah. <laughs> I'm like, turn on a camera. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it was like true. a sink or, sink or swim there. And uh, yeah, and then you also uh, taught me how to DM, which I, again, thank you for, B. Dave. Um, and that's been about uh, maybe six months and uh it came uh out of um wanting to tell the story because when i was finally able to create a character that was my own i like could let my mind run with creativity and i did want to kind of create an entire world around her and you know i get little details in my mind and that seemed fun to me um and uh and, you know, also because uh, sometimes we run our Patreons together, B. Dave, and sometimes we trade off some DM responsibilities. It can, you know, sometimes you want to play, sometimes I want to play, sometimes one of us wants to DM. Hey. Uh, you have, in fact, been playing the game on hard mode. That is true. Now, this is fascinating for me because you ever know, like, when you when you recommend a movie to someone, and this is a conversation you and I have had, where there's some things that you kind of had to be there, like Hackers. Like, Hackers has not aged well. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Dune. I told you, I think Dune has aged well, but I don't know, because, you know, there's that fog of you were there the first time. But you have basically gotten to experience what it's like to really get into these games and really get into storytelling, like in the modern era. So uh, first of all, uh, why is it that you think these games are fun? Like, why is it that like you in now with gaming being what it is, you know, consoles, you're a console gamer, uh, you've now got a PC so you can join the PC master race. Uh, you've been streaming Bloodlines lately. Uh, so you have obviously all the options in the world. Like, what do you think is exciting and entertaining about games like Vampire and D&D like now? Uh, especially to have really just kind of uh, embraced the hobby fairly recently. Um, I think like any good game, there's a multitude of reasons why uh, RPG is fun. And I think that they are all really, uh, they're individual to each person for sure. Um, for me, it's, uh, uh, I like being creative and I like being imaginative and I like, uh, I, I come across as a fairly abrasive kind of girl. I'm like a tough girl, but for me, I get to make my characters like a little girly, a little, a little bit more girly sometimes, and like things like that that like you wouldn't expect. Uh, kind of like my character today. She's a real heartbreaker, but like you know, it's most I was of like, the time. I was like, remember these words she's saying when we roll out her character here momentarily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, yes, that's that. so. I mean, you. There's lots of different reasons. There's uh, different aspects of yourself that you can. Um, explore in different ways, things that uh, uh, people can, you know, it can be used therapeutically. Like there's just, uh, RPG is good for a lot of things. And sometimes you just want to cosplay and play dress up and be somebody else. And that is also a hundred percent valid. And that is another reason why I also like to do it (laughs) because if I could like play dress up every day, like I would, and I know nothing's stopping me right now except I don't have enough coffee. That's my excuse. I just, I just need more coffee and then I would cosplay every funny I would, I would submit, is it possible to ever have enough coffee? Like what is this enough that you speak of? No. Yeah, valid. valid. Well, and now we're in a pay where we, the rest of society has embraced what we've been doing for some time now with a pants optional lifestyle. Again, I reject pants and all the other lies of the before times. Should we do? Uh, should we do a pants fashion show? Should we? Should we do the reveal here of like what? What is the choice of today? Because I I've always dreamed of pajama pants. I mean that is true. First of all, y'all really don't know this. Like there's been we've been doing a, like Long Beach by Night, and she's like Lula Castile, perfect makeup, tiara, lace, everything. And what is would like what it, like right now? If, if if I could bust you out here. So. Usually when I do Lula Castile, it's usually the big furry fuzzy pants because the studio is slightly colder than the house is. But right now I've got I've got these nice I've got these nice plaid flannels on. I've gone yeah. a la Winchester with it. 
it actually did come with a shirt that said bring me some pie so these are my what i've christened my dean winchester pajama pants first of all y'all when you see the long beach by night promo shots and a dark and wish one see how many are from the waist up second when we do our group shots notice how this woman is always conspicuously standing behind someone because the rest of us would do it and then it's like furry or pants and we're like oh great cool 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 Awesome. Uh, the ER pants are fucking amazing. <laughs> you know, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And, and, and honestly, they're on brand for a Malkavian. Like, I don't even know why we attempted to hide it, really. Just like in oh, my no. head. In, yeah. yeah. Like, Lula is still wearing her Harley Quinn flannels in the midst uh -huh. of being Baron of Long Beach. Yeah, that's true. Uh, now, let me ask you this. A lot of times people will ask me, like, what do you like better, um, being a player or a DM? I'm not going to necessarily ambush you with that question. But I will say... What do you feel are the differences between uh, plus or minus between being a player and being a DM? Oh, um, I think they're just very different altogether. I mean, a player, you're playing the game. You you are the one asking the questions, and when you are the DM, you're you, like you are. It's it's very different. Like it's it's like being the banker in Monopoly. Like, <laughs> you're there, you're in charge, and you're definitely going to cheat. <laughs> um, like, I don't know what you're talking about. I say moving away the loaded 20s, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Pulls the DM screen closer. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's it's just, it's very different. It's it's very different. Um, uh I, to me, honestly, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Uh, both are enjoyable for different, very different reasons. Do um, you, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, it's just that's yeah, that's hard. That's hard to compare those two. You, so, I, I can't. I, I think again, this this is like magnificent to me because it's like uh, I, I get to you. These things are still so fairly new for you. So I get to ask you some of these questions. It's like, you know, if I suddenly were to start talking to you about like, what was it like becoming a singer? It's like, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, like that was so long ago, you know, but at least these things are like fairly fresh. Um, let me ask you this. When you decided you wanted to take on being a DM and it was uh, fairly early, has being a DM and being a streaming DM been what you think? thought it was going to be whatever you thought it was now that you have some idea of the reality is actually doing the job what you thought doing the job would be like uh it's easier than i thought it was uh i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that i mostly uh dm vampire which takes place in you know like a modern setting and you can like reference mtv and like it makes sense i feel like it might be a little bit more challenging with dnd &D just because there's so much lore to catch up on which is why i haven't done it yet but i, I do i do want to learn ravenloft and and when i do run a dnd &D soon it will be a dark creepy dnd &D and it will be amazing um uh and uh yeah so uh, it's it it is it's it's difficult in different ways than I thought it would be, but it's a lot, it's honestly a lot easier than I thought it would be. Like, um, when I used to just play like randomly with uh, with friends, when I would, you know, pick up somebody else's character sheet and I would always see the person who was uh, DMing, like it seemed like there was so much math involved and so much, uh, oh, you know, like a thought and preparation. And uh, in reality, you know, a lot of it is DM screens exist for a reason. Yeah, there is math involved, but sometimes that math didn't even matter because it, it like you needed, you know, that specific NPC to live anyways, you know, plot armor, things like that. No, stop so, outing our secrets. Do not tell them, child. But, but I mean, you know, it's true. So you would th like it's you think that there's it's supposed to be down to a science at first, or at least I did. I thought I thought like it had to be like accurate and, and precise. And in reality, it is still more creative than it is uh, mathematical more than anything. It's about, uh, you know, creativity and storytelling, which is good. <laughs> I'm that side of the brain. I'm not the analytical side of the brain. That is people speak in numbers and my brain goes buzz. <laughs> Yeah, they, no, you're you're absolutely right there, and it's uh, like that meme that I've shared a few times now that it was like the DM screen only exists to fudge rolls to the player's benefit. You know? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it, and of course there is 
a way that you can run the game. First of all, there's no wrong way to run the game as long as the players are enjoying it. You as the DM need to enjoy it, but especially the players need to enjoy it because it is a collaborative art. Um, there is a very crunchy, intense way to play it, especially if you start getting into things more like the miniatures. I know like you like miniatures. I'm They're not necessarily my jam. I like minis okay. for different reasons, uh, mostly because I am like a visual person. Like if I can see something, which is funny because like I do music, which is like audible. So you'd think listening would be my key skill. It's not. If I can see something, that's when I'm like, oh, OK, that's when I can start to plots. So especially things like um, things like D&D, &D especially, which are very mathematical, you know, as a, it says, you know, you can only move a certain amount of feet or, you know, this is a certain reach, you know, to use this uh, ability, like things like that. The minis help me a lot. Number one, because ADD, so even if I like could hold attention the entire time, like, or, or couldn't hold attention, it's, I'll still get lost. So it's good. It's good for me to be able to see things and then know like what I can do from where I'm at. And just me being visual, minis help me a lot. Plus, Minis are awesome and like they duh, they're just cool. They're just freaking cool. You don't need an excuse to have minis. They're just they're freaking nice. I I am not anti mini. I just find for me, I try to be so spontaneous with the storytelling that mm -hmm. once I use miniatures, it's like I'm already like I have to commit to a certain course of action. Like the room has to look like that. That's what's in it, you know? Um, versus when we're doing theater of the mind, it's easier to be like, is this thing in there? And you're like, well, yeah, <laughs> it is. It was right over there the entire time, you know? It's why, um, it's why you need a friend with a very large mini collection so they can just like like pull one from below and be like, it's there now. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, I, I know that uh, you also are a very accomplished uh, mini painter. Uh, I'm not going to bust you out, but maybe on the break, if you have any of them, because I know you painted some recently and you gave them as gifts to your patrons. If you've got any still there, maybe during the break, we'll bring them over and we'll, we'll show them to everybody. I, uh, I do. I have a couple extra that I have not uh, sent out yet. Um, because they, I, I made some extra for um, some people that were not my patrons um, mm -hmm. that uh, were were getting uh, gifts. So I have those couple those couple left over that I will uh, bust them out and show you. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at them a little bit later on. Now it's funny that you mention uh, Ravenloft as being uh, something that you'd be interested in trying because I'm going to bring you a tiny little snip of Ravenloft uh, right now. Yes, Ravenloft is the gothic horror. Uh, setting of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, made famous by Curse of Strahd. Um, but we're just gonna like dip like a little teeny tiny toe into it here. So here's the thing, y'all. Uh, part of the ethos of one on one shots is uh, I talk to people, I figure out what they want to play, you know, what their character is, what their ideal setup is. I sort of ambushed this poor woman. I sort of was like, cool, 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 cool. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, play this. Um, <laughs> we talked a little bit, so uh, it's a little complicated. It's a little new, but I think you're gonna like it a lot uh, because we we've talked in the past, um, and you had a thing against bards. Mm -hmm. What well, what what was this bard bias? I don't, well, okay, so because I've always been a singer, like. I mean, you know, even like, you know, they do that high school thing and it's like, I got voted best singer. So it just, it, to me, it felt so obvious to play a bard. Like I didn't, and I'm a contrarian. So everybody's like, oh, you're the singer. Like, you know, and when we play rock band, they're like, you're going to sing. I'm like, what if I want to play drums? Like it's, it's, it just, it's always assumed that I'm going to do the thing that it involves the singing. So when I had the chance to play D and D and be something else that wasn't me, naturally, I'm like, well, I'm not going to play Bard. It's the same reason I don't play Toreador. It's because I am that already in real life. Why in an imaginary world would I want to be exactly what I am? No, I want to be OP and something different and superpower me. So like for me, I've never played Bard because it just felt like the obvious choice. So, because but I hear good things about Bard. Fireball, you plus Fireball, that's why. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, hey, wizards do fireball too. Uh, let me ask you one quick question here. I don't know if you didn't mention this uh, because just we've talked about a million things or if you're just trying to keep this one to your chest. In one of your D&D &D groups, uh, there is a famous character 
that you played with? Uh, were you uh, not were you not revealing that to keep their secrets, or had you just not thought of it? Because it's dope to me. It's life to you, but it's dope to me. Uh, uh I'm in, in, I, I am in, very in Florida confused. in Florida. Famous oh. Character. Oh yeah, one of my uh, one of my uh, my groups in Florida. That when I when I am back home with my parents and I do step into uh, play D and D, uh, I play D and D with Mickey Mouse. Y'all, she plays with Mickey Mouse, mm-hmm. like legit. Mm-hmm. I like a Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Yep. Mm-hmm. The the Mickey Mouse. The Mickey Mouse was a uh, part of the the D and D home group back in Orlando. But I mean, here's the thing: you play D and D in Orlando, you kind of expect that. Like, there's there's a Disney princess somewhere in your because when you grow up in Florida, that's the natural progression of things. You go to high school in Florida, and they train you to work at Disney World. It's a very small town. That's kind of like that is your 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 kind of like career when you grow up in Orlando. You just assume that if nothing else, if you haven't decided, like you don't have a career path chosen, you're like, when I get out of high school, we're working at Disney. And they, they Disney does. They hire, And that's what Orlando is just full of performers. <laughs> that's why. Again, you might be cool, but you'll never be. I played D&D with uh, Mickey Mouse Cool. Mickey Mouse. I, will, I will just say, I've been hit up a couple of times to play Jaffa. So perhaps if I'd been born in Orlando, it could have been me. Right, yeah. I'm just mad that I'm not tall enough to be Maleficent at the park. That's uh, that's I'm I'm Disney princess height. I'm like five three, five four. All the villains are five eleven. Had I been just a little bit taller, I would have been a bomb Maleficent. That's all I'm but, saying. But, but, but I'm you, saying. Got it, you got it in here though. You got the villainy in here. <laughs> that's uh, a lot of villainy. Very tiny package. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> I finally sold you on at least trying a, a bard here, but uh, w- would you like to reveal what your character is today or would you like me to reveal it? Oh, uh, you go ahead because uh, uh, you'll probably say it more eloquently than I will. I'll probably mess it up. <laughs> uh, assuming that I don't immediately uh, mispronounce her name because you and I pr- pronounce her name very differently. It's Nasira, right? Nasira, yes. Yes, Nasira Devari who is going to be a barbarian scald. Uh, she, we're gonna do in level 20 because of course we are. Uh, she's got five ranks in uh, totem barbarian and 15 ranks in swords bard. So it uh, should be a grand old time. <laughs> and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try and play her to the best of my ability. Cause I, like, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm this a new bard. I've never played bard. So let's see. Mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very excited because I hear very good things about Bard, but I'm very unfamiliar. So, this uh... Path of the Berserker, Barbar- Barbarian, Swords Bard. Have, yes, I have a great excite. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you are going to be a, a Zerial Tiefling, right? So, let us uh, let's get down into it here. You find yourself uh, on a in a small town on a windswept cove the waves are crashing against the shore off in the distance and it is a raucous night in this inn people are joyous and happy they're raising their cups to you you can smell bread baking in the oven and ale being poured as people are singing songs and gathered around listening to your tales nasira as you regale them of stories of your adventures. And a, an old dwarf is sitting there and he says, ah, there's no chance. You've done all those things that you said you done, lass. I'm two, three times your age and I've barely accomplished a tenth of those things. Uh, that just sounds like you're underachieving to me, old man. And she <laughs> kind of punches him in the shoulder. Oh, 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 it's so strong. Uh, uh, I mean, nay, uh, it didn't hurt. Uh, it didn't hurt. It's fine. Uh, uh, mm, uh. He's like, tell me, is it true that you're as strong as they say you are? They say you can lift a steer clear over your head with a single arm, but you didn't look so strong to me. Ah, yes, I know. I, you know, I maybe I need to start lifting. I get this a lot. Um, yes, all the rumors you've heard about me are true. What, the, what does Nasira look like? Uh, Nasira is a very uh, petite, 
uh, tiefling. Uh, she is curvy. Uh, she has long flowing uh, red hair and uh, the little ram horns. Um, she is not a winged tiefling. Uh, but she does still have uh, little cloven hooves. Um, she is, uh, believe it or not, not an odd color like a tiefling is. She's actually like fairly human coloring. Um, and she does ha still have the, the pointed ears. Um, but uh, she's got very vivid uh, yellowish greenish eyes. While you're sitting there, you, you see, when you mentioned that you should start lifting, you see a big pot-bellied orc walks up to the table and plops down and is like, Oh, I heard about you. I'd like to challenge you to a contest of strength. And puts his arm down on the table like he wants to arm wrestle. And his arm is about the size of your leg. And she goes, oh, I like a challenge. I'm in for this today. All right, every single one of you guys, you always think you're tough. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, uh, oh, 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 wait. Let's put wages, wages. And you see a small gnome hops up on the table and is like, here you go. Put a gold on the lady or a gold on the lad right here on the table. And you see a pile of gold starts appearing under both. And it's about even, Nisira. Uh, you see, some of these people have heard the stories or seen you do this, but about the other half of them are uh, really more convinced at the size of this gigantic creature apart from you. You think mm, it's about split, really. And he looks at you and he's like, oh, all right, you ready? Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. On count of three. One, two, uh, you roll your athletics check and you can roll with advantage on this check. Ooh. Uh, let's see, I rolled a 19 uh, and then that's plus 15. I don't mm -hmm. math well, but I think that's, that's 34. Yes. So believe it or not, this burly man got a natural 20. You lock arms with him, Nisira, and for a second, he really doesn't budge. You've done this countless times, and you feel a little bit of anger start to like boil up inside of you, <laughs> and you crash him through the table and through the floor. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I just look up at the rest of the bar and go, ta-da! Ah, you know, and the little gnome starts uh, sending out the gold coins to the people that it wagered. And you see the orc pops his head up and he goes, oh, boy. My arm didn't move, though. I kept it locked. Ramrod stray. Oh, um, yeah, that, that's the thing. You got to give it a little wiggle room, and this, this, sometimes that helps. You, He looks at you, and he's like, <sighs> and you see, like, foam starts to, like, kind of build up around his mouth like he's about to freak out a little bit. And you hear a familiar voice echoing inside of your head, Nasira. Oh dear. Must we destroy this creature? It is the voice of Hezeron, your intelligent sword. <clears throat> um I mean he just wanted to arm wrestle buddy. I don't I don't think we should kill him for that and we're used to this by now, you know that. Hmm I know how this ends more often than not. I don't understand why you laze about with these common mortals. How many steins of ale can you need? Oh, um, all of them. You see the orc does pull himself out and draws himself to his full height. He's a foot taller than you and half again as wide. And he's like, you cheated. 
I didn't move my arm. I didn't. I just can't. I just walk past him and ignore him and kind of like check back at my sword and just keep walking. And uh, I look back at the uh, piles of gold that are still there to see who's taking them, see who won. You see the the gnome is still dealing it out, and as you come over, he's like, "Oh, ha, yeah, here's your cut, Nasira, same as always." Uh, I pick the gnome up by his head, just with two fingers, and kind of Ooh. take it, take it from him, and then set it back down. Ooh. Hey, that is actually really good for the spinal alignment. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I know, right? That's why. That's why I did that. I, just, I, I thought you might enjoy that. I just heard the little cracks. Wait, look out! You need the orc smashes a chair over your back. Boosh. And he just I look back at the gnome and I go, what? <laughs> He's like, oh no, not again. I just got done remodeling this place, Nasira. Oh. All right, we'll take it outside. And I grab the uh the one that smashed the chair over my back and I try to throw him through the, the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your athletics. Uh, through the wall and into the street, I should say. That's the wall I'm throwing him through. All right. Uh, 13 plus 15 is 27, 28? 28. This <laughs> freaking incredibly lucky <laughs> orc rolled another natural 20. Thank you, level up nice. Uh, so... <laughs> As you sling him through the wall, he very much goes through it, but lands out in the mud in like a full superhero, like boom, and like the mud blah, ripples out under him. Like he just looks absolutely badass when he lands. So, like, oh yeah, maybe well, you ain't as tough as everybody says, huh? And everybody in the bar goes, ooh, Nasira, maybe you ain't as tough as everybody says. <laughs> and you hear your sword, oh dear. Hmm. I need it yet, or will you pummel him about the head and shoulders? Ooh, um, I don't know. Let's see what this guy's made of first, uh, and I'll march out there. You see, the rain is starting to fall. It is a very like Pacific Northwest kind of climate. You know, misty gray skies, uh, tall pines, a rough-hewn landscape with this misty drizzle coming down. And he very much is walking around like, oh, I'm gonna show you all what a real hero looks like. You all heard these stories about Nasira, but this will be the beginning of Thag story. Ah, 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 ah. Thag, 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 thag. And as he's looking at the people trying to get them hyped up, you see a few of them are like, eh, eh, eh. And then they see you come out and they're like, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and he sort of like paces back and forth. He's like, mm, right. I'll give you the first shot since it was ungentlemanly of me to hit you with the chair in there. Um, she kind of has like a little compact that she's like pulled out of her bosoms that she's kind of like fixing her hair in and, and she just looks up at him at, as she's walking out and just goes, oh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, what? Do you see he just go, mm, 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 ah, and just comes running straight towards you. Um, do I have? He does not appear to be armed. He's just, rah, rah. okay. He's not armed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cast hold monster on him. In <laughs> uh, his luck, his run out. <laughs> hey, uh, does that work? Is he a, is he a monster? Uh, you can hit him with whole person, which you've also got. So it's the same. Oh, okay. Visible. He very up. Ah, it literally freezes mid, and you hear the mud kind of goes. From when he was kicking it up and it just settles back in his eyes and like that's what I thought. Um so uh I could let you go, or I could pummel you right here while you're stuck. I have so many options, and you're just right there. Um hmm. And she gets real close into his face and uh she uses vicious mockery and says, your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. You 
see the uh, his eyes sort of like bug a little bit and flinch as the psychic pain of the damage you're inflicting on him washes through him. Uh, he does not break out of his spell. <laughs> he is still held there, just like you see tears start to form at the bottom of his eyes, but they are bloodshot and angry, too, as he still does are. Uh, you're going to have to calm down, or I'm going to pull my sword out. Oh, dear. Mm. I believe you promised the constabulary you would not decapitate anyone else unnecessarily, Nasira. Hmm. Yes, but this isn't unnecessary. Do you see him? Oh, to be clear, I would love to separate his head from his shoulders. You just asked me to remind you, so I'm doing so. Whenever you get put in jail, I get put into storage, and I do hate storage. Mm. All right, fine. We'll leave you back there, but uh, I don't like this guy. Uh, and uh, I am going to uh, unarmed strike him and try and knock him out <laughs> with a blow. Again, he cannot move, so you will not miss, but still roll on the off. You can roll with advantage on the off chance that you get a 20. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, that's still terrible. Um, bo both of my dice betrayed me there. Uh, and as long as it's not a one, you'll hit him. Uh, the, uh, then I rolled a 10, but what is, uh, which one am oh, I at? You still to? have a significant uh, bonus to attack there. You still, because of your skill, you are still plus 15 to hit, even unarmed. Uh, nice. And your strength is legendary. So you walk up to him. Uh, how do you hit him, by the way? Again, he's like, ah. Uh, I'm just going to give him a nice, clean uh, 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 left, right hook. Right hook you, to the down. Come up there. You've already viciously mocked him. His eyes are filled with equal parts emotional damage and rage. And you're like, oh. <clears throat> and he goes flying into the brush. <laughs> <laughs> And for a second, there's silence. And then you hear, ah, you did it again. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. And you see the gnome comes out holding a tankard of ale that is like, in his little hands, is almost like he's carrying a barrel of it. And he comes out, he's like, ah, whew, thanks. Although he points back at the big hole in the side of the wall. He's like, just, just. A couple of feet to the other side, he'd have gone out the door, Sarah. But now you have room for a skylight. There's a big bay window we can put right there. Think about it. You can drink ale by the sea now. We'll put. We'll just put like a bar right there with some stools. We can have a couple of uh, tavern maidens come on and just you know do the thing. We can. It'll be fun and just it, it, it's a bar. It's open in out seaside property. You're welcome. I gotta tell you, you might be uh, bad for business, but you're good for an old gnome's heart. <laughs> he hands you the uh, the flagon. Yeah, uh, and she she does, and she'll cheers him. And congrats again, champ. Ah, mm. uh, thank you, little gnome it, man. While you're the, his name is Lester, by the way. This tiny. thank you, Lester. Yeah. Uh, he, hang on, let me, let me remember Lester. No, yeah. All right, uh, while you are drinking again, the townsfolk come out and like, uh, they're, hey, uh, hey, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you, you have a gather, you're gathering of some of the, the locals because what you found, you've been laying your head down in this village a couple of months, you know, you kind of go where the wind takes you, but it's still been working here. And you find there is basically, uh, as the tide comes in, you know, fishermen, tradesmen, uh, mercenaries start showing up because it's the same song everywhere. You find a nice place. Word spreads you're here. More and more people come and want to challenge you. It becomes a headache and you got to move on, uh, you know, because everybody's heard the stories about Nasira. 
uh, stories that you yourself are pretty good at telling. Uh, oh yeah, the best. No, no one tells them like I do. And you have uh, a an assemblage again of some of the locals and, and a gathering of some uh, guys that sailed in from the White Sails Mercenary Company. Uh, they're just putting in for some shore leave here. And they're like, oh, 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 tell us the one about the giants again, Nasira. Uh, <clears throat> and she does, she goes, oh, uh, all right. Uh, and she uh, goes, um, in song or uh, in story? Ladies' choice, but we'll pay double. Uh, um, double for what? Anything. They <laughs> literally just start piling money on the table. Uh, uh and she does uh pull out um uh a tiny ukulele, and uh she goes, "There once was a woman named Nasira, who killed a mighty giant named." Lyra, uh, and she goes, I don't really know what his name was, but I mean, it works, it works for the song. And, uh, and she's really not that great of a singer, by the way, like this is total Phoebe Buffet, like madness that she goes, but like, for some reason, I think people are just really afraid to tell her that she's not that great because they're like afraid she's going to pummel them into the ground. And, uh, and she does, and she proceeds with this awful tune about, uh, this giant, uh, that, uh, she fought. And it, it's not a great song by any means. <laughs> She's not trying very hard. Uh, it's got a good beat and we can dance to it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, woo, Nasira. Um, and the, Lester is just like, uh, she does most of her performance with, uh, with her fists, as I like to call them, thunder and lightning. That's trademark, by the way. If you start calling your fists thunder and lightning, I get 10%. Uh, she's more of a bard of action. Uh, yeah, she's a, yeah. It's a, hmm, ooh, yeah. We got a workshop that- one, uh, one day, one day, vocal lessons, maybe, soon. But until then, my ukulele playing's wonderful. Indeed, you have mastered a number of instruments, both the blade and the ukulele. Hmm, yeah, I'm a little bit better at the blade, a little bit. Hmm. I think you have me to thank for that, but yes, your results are beyond reproach. I hold you so you can do your thing. It's, 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 it's a partnership. It's true. I have been wielded by a number of hands over the years, and none so dexterous as yours. <laughs> Giggity. Hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> As you are there uh, partying, uh, you give me your um, perception there, Sarah. Where's my modifier? It's I'm funny, bad at clicking uh, things. We always joke that uh, w wits and awareness is the perception of vampire, but in D and D, it's actually perception. Yay! Finally, uh, that is twenty one. As you are sort of drinking and, and carousing, uh, there is a, a, a newly uh, hung tarp over the hole that you put in the side uh, of the tavern earlier today. A slight breeze uh, blows up and billows the tarp slightly, and outside. Uh, near where you knocked the orc into the woods, you see a small robed figure just standing there. Uh, I'll lean over to Lester and be like, Lester, you uh, you recognize that guy? Who? That robed guy? I don't see any robed guy, Nasira. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, I will. Oh, do I need to cut you off? Uh, how many fingers am I holding up? Uh, uh, six. Um. Oh, she's in double. Oh dear. Uh, the but has her on, and and she will lean back and kind of pull the sword just so that the top of it peeks out, and she'll be like, "You see that guy?" Again, uh, Hazaron is a 
it's a very large two-handed sword. Uh, he would be conspicuously large in the hands of, of the largest man. And in the hands of a slight little tiefling, it looks almost comedically large until you strike. And then the truth becomes quickly apparent. He, being intelligent, also rolled a one. <laughs> like... I can only see what you point me towards, Nasira. I see no such robed figure. Oh, great. Okay. Um. Well, you might be about to see a robed figure in just a second. And uh, she'll march over to this robed figure. As you start to head outside, you notice, uh, again, you're used to it being gray, overcast. You know, the sun is rare. The clouds will peak every once in a while. But between how far north you are here and the proximity to the ocean, it's pretty much always sort of misty and overcast, uh, which you find pleasing, really, more often than not. But as you come out, you realize it's dark out here now, much darker than it should be. Uh, it's roughly two, three, but I mean, night shouldn't fall for another three-ish hours or so, but it looks actually pretty dark. Like you realize you are having to rely on your own uh, supernatural vision uh, more than you probably should have to right now. Hmm. Uh, you there. Are you the one making it so dark out here? The figure, as you get a little closer, you realize sort of uh, had its back turned to you. And it turns around uh, slowly. And it... You hear a voice sort of from everywhere and nowhere all at the same time just say... I don't mean to offend you, mighty hero, but before I speak to you about my true mission, I must make sure that the stories are true. I mean, you could just tell me the mission and you could find out that they're true when I do the thing you ask me to do. Oh, who are you? What? I, I, what I, what's going on? Mm. If you would permit me one small test. And you see, uh, you couldn't quite make it out before. She's got a long um, staff that is red that sort of like ends in what looks like a uh, a red carved tentacle but when she says this to you you see it actually like moves a little bit and a beam shoots right out at you you have it because of your danger sense have advantage on saves when you can see them coming so uh give me a deck save that you can roll with advantage Mm, let's see. I rolled a 17 and my dex is... So, now. Plus two. So yes. 19. You also have something known as a cloak of displacement, which makes it where you always look like you're slightly different than where you work. Uh, you're at least until somebody successfully hits you. So you notice you, through a combination of your cat-like reflexes jumping out of the way, the beam already goes slightly wide because it's you always look like you're about three feet over from where you are. And you see under the hood a beautiful jet black face, just sort of smile, revealing gleaming white teeth. And hmm. she says... Hmm. Apologies for that. And she just sort of nods. And you turn and you see where the beam passed you. It has drilled a perfect hole through a tree and through two buildings and went out. As you turn and look, you can see the a 
chunk of disintegration has just been carved all the way through, all the way out to the other side. Hmm. That was impressive. So were you. She pushes the hood back, and again, you see the long white hair of a drow come tumbling out. Part of it is braided, part of it is just still hanging loose. Uh, again, historically, the drow are sworn enemies of the surface dwellers. You've classed swords with them your own fair share of times. And she stands there with the staff in her hand. Um, give me, let me look at your skills here. Give me either uh, an arcana or a history check, which to tell you the truth is going to be the same for you. You usually make history. You don't pay a lot of attention to it, but still, let's see. <laughs> you recognize this. 18. Hey, um, you look at her in the way she's dressed under this black cloak. You actually can make out that she's wearing a white dress that is like flowing in the wind. It almost looks like it might be made out of smoke or even like spider silk. And she's got a small crown on her head. Uh, you realize this is some sort of, um, uh, with 18, you realize that this is some sort of a drow holy woman. She might actually be a, a matron mother, very powerful, but also uh, revered in drow society. Uh, I'll kind of, I'll, I'll nod my head down to her a little bit as a sign of respect, and I will, uh, I, I, I'll actually get down like a little bit like on one knee too and then i'll i'll stand back up and be like uh, uh sorry i didn't realize you were like a, a a holy person at first a woman of the cloth um what what can i help you with she sort of like looks around for a moment and she says i must admit i'm not accustomed to such a polite greeting. I return the honor to you and greet you with respect, hero. And she very much like breaks her leg and like bows <laughs> like very far down, almost into the mud and stands up again. And she says, would you mind if we spoke somewhere slightly more private? I assure you, I mean you no more harm. Uh, Nasira nods and she goes, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm sure there's a place around here somewhere. There's a, there's a lot of rough and tumbly types, uh, in there though. Um, uh, sister, mother, um, what, Matron. what, what? Matron. Um, uh, um, yeah, so, uh, maybe somewhere out here. And uh, Nasir will go looking for a little uh, private spot around there. You hear as you're sort of like walking around, you hear like, I, who are you talking to out there, Nasir? Your, Your mother. Ah, <laughs> she loves you. Hey, hey, mom. <laughs> she sort of um, walk. You notice Nasir as this woman is walking through the mud. She's not leaving footprints. And she does sort of make her way kind of over behind uh, a, a uh, thatched barn like building right on the edge of the forest. And she, when you come around the corner, she sort of looks you up and down again as a drow. She is not very tall, but she is slightly taller than you. And she looks at you and she says, mm, Tales of your legend have even reached to us in the Underdark. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I talk about myself a lot. Maybe I should stop doing that. Oh, don't stop, please. I must admit, I have been forced to take a course of action that is normally undesirable amongst my kind. I have been forced to ask for help. Even worse, I've been forced to ask it of a surface dweller. Hey! 
I apologize. I did not mean any offense. But surely you must know past diplomatic relationships between the surface in the Underdark have been strained. Mm. Yeah, but I wasn't a part of any of that, so you're fine. Well, in Nasira, you also know it's because they've invaded lots of times. I mean, you know, like they've started plenty of dirt with the surface. Hmm. Yeah. Still, I've, 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 look, I sing and I punch big things. No, no, that doesn't concern me. Uh, what, what can I help you with? You do more than punch things, my lady. Uh, shh, I know, but you're the secret weapon. You can't. You keep talking when we're in the middle of like negotiations. Like this is why we get like paid less for things because the, I can't take. I can't. And I do kind of pull the sword out and set it in my lap. I'm like, I can't ask for hazard pay if they know you exist. Then they know we're just gonna win. When you draw the sword, she does sort of like take a step back and kind of clench up on her staff a little, and you see that carved tentacle wave a little bit. But when you start talking to the sword, she just sort of like looks at you and she's like, Oh, the dreadblade Hazaron. Magnificent. Oh, mm. I like her. Yeah, she seems nice uh, thus far. You know what? Here, and uh, I will take uh, Hazaron, and I'll actually kind of stab him through the chair next to me, so that like it's almost like he's sitting, but he's just through the seat of the chair. Uh, oh, that works. Delightful change of pace here. How do you get comfortable on these odd things? Uh, I I don't know, but you're out now. Why don't you do the negotiating? Since you know you want to be chatty. <laughs> She looks at you and she actually smiles and she says, I have never encountered anyone like you. Fascinating. Uh, allow me to get to it, as I believe you say up here. A vile thing has attacked our home and I am loath to admit even our power has not been sufficient to dislodge it. Hmm. Uh, what kind of vile thing? A great and ancient dragon. All right. It, it heard tell of our wealth and resources and wished to claim it for its own. Hmm. Have you tried just giving it everything it's asked for? Sometimes they just like to put it in caves and sit in front of it. And that's kind of like a thing they do. It's like dragons, they just like to hoard. But I mean, I could go, I could, some of them are definitely more dangerous than that. So like, if you feel like that's the case, I will, I, me and, and my compadre here will go take care of, uh, of the problem to the best of our abilities for you. You are, in fact, a terrible negotiator. You just said yes without asking for anything in reply. I do not understand this approach. You know, you had the opportunity to talk, too. You were sitting right there. I just want you to know that. That. I want you to know that. She looks at you and she says, you have, she looks at you for a second, like she studies you for really a long moment. And presumably you are telling the truth here, right? You're not attempting to deceive her. Uh, as, as far as what? <laughs> Literally any of it. I mean, so far, like you've, you've been, you have been, I'm, I'm assuming you are speaking honestly, but she has ways of knowing if you've been lying to her up until now. <laughs> yeah, no, N Nasir is definitely looking forward to a dragon fight. Mm -hmm. She looks at you for a moment and she says, I assure you the reputation of the drow is well deserved here on the surface but were you to assist us in this 
our gratitude would be extensive. Hmm. How so? She sort of like leans back and kind of looks out at the town, which again is sort of a sleepy little seaside burg, you know, like if, if you weren't here, probably it would only appear on like the most regional of maps. You are a legend. You should be recognized as such. I assume you don't seek wealth. She like looks you up and down. What does, uh, how would Nasira be dressed? Um, Nasira has on a very tight uh, corset uh, and she has on a, uh, a skirt that has the slits clear up the sides so that she can fight in it. Kind of almost looks more like a uh, battle loincloth than it actually does uh, a skirt, but it kind of almost looks like a dress with the, the corset and the things that she has, but it's definitely uh, more so something that she can move around in. And um, underneath the uh, skirt type thing, she's got a lot of um, straps and belts down her legs that uh, have different types of uh, li little things that she needs for battle. She's got like ropes and like a little, you know, like pocket knives, little, little tiny lock pick, little tiny things that she needs here and there for, uh, for, for a bit of a uh, bit of adventuring. Um, and uh, on her back is usually where she carries her sword and uh, her ukulele kind of in a little, a little X there. I don't know if you desire wealth. You already have access to relics of supreme power. And you notice she nods at the sword, but her eye also falls on your belt and on your cloak. Like she very much looks at your greatest <laughs> treasures. But mm. I am sure we can arrive at a reward that is befitting a hero of your station, even if it is only the opportunity to become a legend among the drow, the first of such from the surface. Uh, yes, I forgot to mention the belt and the cloak. That is true. Sorry, I just made this character last night. Those are two very important things that she is in fact wearing. They both have magical powers. Hey, they no, are dead. No. To your credit, the belt and the cloak aren't talking to you. The sword is. You know? so. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, uh, look, we'll just, uh, we'll figure out afterwards what payment is. How's that sound? She looks at you again and you see she very much is like studying you for any sign of deceit. And she says, hmm. You really do seem to do this simply for the challenge, for the joy of it. Yeah. Well, I need a new song. Um, some of my other ones are getting a little old and worn out. The greatest hits like weren't that great to begin with. And um, now they're just really horrible. So, um, I, I, I mean, you know, I used to, I, sometimes I have songs that are good, but now it's like when I sing, it's like I, 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 it's almost like when I insult people, it hurts them a little bit sometimes. So we just, we got to get some better tunes. We have to, I have to, I have to write a choice hit single and I need some fodder for that. And I think dragon fodder is the way to go. Hmm. She puts her hand over her heart and she says, you may call me Matron Whispermoon and bows slightly. And she says, if I might say, I find it pleasing that I did not have to destroy you. And she does smile. Thank you. If you would, I will transport you to our domain. Is that where the dragon is? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Then, yes, I will f uh, follow you. Hold your hand. How do we do this? Mm. If I may. And she twirls the staff down. She slams it on the ground. And when she does, a white ring extends out from under it, underneath both of you. 
and you hear Hezeron just says, and it's cut off as everything goes blank. And that is actually a good place for us to take a little break here so we can um, uh, uh, hydrate, you know, use El Bano. Uh, again, if you have any questions for May, put it in chat with a capital question there. And uh, we will come back uh, with her silky smooth and uneventful adventure through the underdark to fight a dragon. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll, we'll give it 12. We'll go super deluxe. So at 10 till, we'll come back. And we'll be seeing in a minute. All right. And we are back. And yes, we have some questions for Miss Melee Damage here. Oh, do uh, we? we do. So let's look and see at the questions. Uh, again, if you have a question, write capital question in front of it. Uh, if you wrote it like very early in the chat also, you might need to repeat it. Sometimes it scrolls too far back up and we can't get to it. Um, as a storyteller, what is your favorite type of story to tell or scene to put players into? That is from friend of the show, Prince of Bards. What's up, Thomas? Hmm. Um, that's a rough one. Uh, I can't really think of any one particular type of scenario that I like putting people in, really, because uh, different people react to different things. Um... So I don't know. It's more so uh, I like putting people in situations uh, that that they like uh, uh, more so than not because then they engage more, they interact more, and I I enjoy that. But there's not really like I can't really think of any like particular scenario that it's like I always put people through this or I always run people through that. Um, I don't know. I I enjoy facilitating scenes that uh, uh, are good for character growth. Give them a, a chance to kind of advance the narrative, basically, huh? Yeah, but I, that, but again, that's hard to explain because it's like that doesn't ever really look like one particular thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. to um, add some layers and depth to their character, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. versus just going through the motions. Yeah. Uh, question numero dos from Celador Mythica. Sub Celador, uh, what kind of RPG character? It could be any system, D and D, vampire, just a general role. Have you always wanted to play? Oh, um, I mean, I I, I play them. All. I have a lot of very different characters, and I have some characters that are multiple characters in one, like Lula. So, uh, I mean, you you're seeing them. Uh, there's not, I can't really think of any type of character that like immediately springs to mind that I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to play a character like this and haven't yet. Um, because even now I've, I have characters that I've created that I, I haven't got a lot of play time with. And some of them are that, uh, so, uh, I, I don't know. That's a really rough one, but I like, I feel like I've created most of the characters that like are kind of like my dream characters. I think now I'm in the phase where it's trying to figure out what what would be next. Like after the evolution of of this, these guys, then figuring out uh, uh, what I what I need next. But I I don't think that'll come for a while. Uh, and one other one from Celador. Um, are you from Florida? <laughs> yes, I am Florida man. Um, journalism. No, I'm not from there. Uh, I did grow up there. Uh, I was born in Cleveland, so I'm an Ohio girl. I'm a Midwest girl. But um, when I was uh, at, like early teens, uh, we moved preteens to 11, 12. We moved to Florida, and uh, I grew up in Orlando. Uh, nope. Like I said, again, uh, if you guys have more questions, put it in there with the capital question uh, in front of it, and we will uh, try and get to it to the best of our ability. Um, but first, Nasir. After this ring of light happens uh, and cuts Hazaron off mid-sentence there, you feel a cold gust blow in your face, and you find yourself standing in a cavern that looks... Like it's rough hewn stone. Uh, it is almost like a, columns of stone have been shaped almost into pillars. And there are long tables that go out in all directions. And it look like they have been uh, set for a meal that was hastily abandoned. And it is chilly and dim in here. It is only because of your own dark vision that it is not completely black dark. 
and you feel Hazaron in your hand as you hear. Yeah. What, 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 what was that, Hazaron? I said, oh, dear. Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, that, that's accurate. The matron, Whispermoon, is standing there next to you, and she says, this was one of our halls. We were forced to evacuate as the worm and its servants took over. Hmm. I may have neglected to mention the servants. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you did. Um, how many? We killed a number of them. Oh, uh, how many did you not kill? That is, of course, difficult to say. Once we were forced to retreat, it was not clear how many were left afterwards. Hmm. <clears throat> but you were overrun, so there was more of them than there were of you. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. <sighs> uh, which, uh, which way did they go? Um them and the giant dragon she motions ahead through the caverns and she's like our great treasure hold is that direction all right well um i think we got our work cut out for us uh i say to my sword mm -hmm. yes this is why i probably should handle negotiations in the future you were right there you could have said anything you said nothing but sarcasm all these flavors and you chose to be salty i like to watch you work the stories are about you of course and not the great blade hazaron Oh, that's valid. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, hey, uh, lady. Yes. Uh, matron, uh, lady. Uh, um, all right. So I'm going to go uh, down there and I'm going to look for this dragon. Um, uh, so giving it all of your treasure, I just want to be clear, is not a valid option. You do not want to do that. That would be very low on the list of acceptable outcomes, yes. All right, because I'm just saying that usually makes them go away. But if you don't want to do that, okay, I will go down and I will take care of this dragon situation for you. She reaches into her robes and she pulls out a black stone that looks vaguely like an eyeball and hands it out to you. This is a very odd gift. Um, thank you. Um, what does what does this do? I will remain here to make sure no one attacks you from behind. Should you need my assistance, speak into the stone, and I will join you. <clears throat> just, just like this. Yes, just like that. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um. Uh, and and you'll jump in if we need you. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that that works out. Does that sound like a good deal to you? No, but we've come this far. <clears throat> All right. I think we're ready for this. This is going to be a, a grand adventure in the making. Here is to our new song, and I cheers the rock to Hazaron, and then put it. I Sad. look forward to hearing you perform in our greatest halls. And she takes a step back from you and sort of looks to the left and to the right and slams her staff down. And you see a large multicolored wall appears between you and her. Hmm. That's a nice effect. We should get one of those for like stage. Like I think that during the next gig, that would look really, really good. 
Indeed it would. Perhaps behind a freshly mounted dragon skull, would you say? Yes. 100%. Or, and hear me out, if we can, we make friends with the dragon. And then I can ride the dragon into the gig. That would be an acceptable outcome, I suppose. Although, I must warn you, I can detect approaching creatures. Oh, uh, which way? Towards the direction of the treasure room. Okay, well, uh, I guess we should go. Uh, we should go ask them a couple of questions. You in particular, I feel like you should do the asking. You see, the matron is like basically standing there holding the staff, and it's like her lips are moving, like she's repeating something, but you can't make it out on the other side of the wall. Um, do I have any way, like an uh, an arcana roll or something, to figure that out? What she's doing? Well, you don't innately have an ability to read lips, but I'll give you insight. You have a very high insight uh, to just see if you can detect anything about her, basically. Uh, 17 and 12, uh, 29. 29. Uh, if you had to wager a guess, she is maintaining her concentration on something. Okay, uh, at this point, I'm going to assume that the rainbow wall is some kind of, like, shield for her? Uh, it looks probably like some sort of wall of force, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably what she's uh, concentrating on. So I'm just going to, I'm going to head towards uh, towards the treasure room. I'm going to head towards where the other other things are. As you are heading along, give me your perception check. You're pretty good at this. Uh, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a big old three on the dice. Um, uh, that is still a 15 for you, so that's not bad. You do hear, like, clattering and growling up ahead. Like, <laughs> up ahead in the darkness. Uh, let's see. She's a new girl, so I'm going to look at her spells real quick to see what she can do. Uh, again, I super ambushed you with this character. It was like, hear me out, hear me out. Here's this crazy complex thing. Yeah, so uh, I, I understand that this takes takes a little bit of reading because she's she is intricate. But this uh, this girl is a wrecking ball, y'all. Uh, when we were done with this sheet, I was like, this shouldn't be possible, but cool, 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 cool. Yep. Um. Let's see. Mm. Also, I've never played Bard before, so like a lot of these, uh, a lot of these spells, I just honestly don't know what they do yet. That so, is very valid. If you have any question about anyone in particular, I can lay it on you quickly. Or if you're trying to figure out, like I want to do X, I can kind of help you, like maybe based on what you can do, figure that out because it is a lot. That is one of the challenges with a uh, level twenty D and D, especially when you play the character at level twenty. You don't really have the chance to grow into the powers, so it is like this long list of just stuff. Yeah. Yep, that's yep, that's exactly what I'm going through. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the the polymorph. Can I uh, can I morph myself? Yes, you can. Okay. So I I, I will just say as a point, uh, I know you have played a druid with wild shape, where you turn into forms that are really good for fighting. Uh, that's not kind of so much what this is. This is more like mm -hmm. you turn into things for like movement or perception or like sneakiness. Yes. Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, get a little closer in on them. I want to, if I could polymorph into, I'm not sure what my options are because I've never used the spell before. So uh, do I have the ability to polymorph into an animal of some sort or do mm -hmm. I, can I just, uh, okay. So I'd like to be a bat. You absolutely could polymorph into a bat. In, face, in fact, I mean, yes, but also a difference between polymorph and wild shape is you can turn into like stuff. If you're like, I want to be a chair. You know? That was, <laughs> like was going to be my next question was if I could turn into inanimate objects as well. You can. Yes, uh, in previous editions of the game, it was polymorph any object. Now it's just kind of the one spell. But yes, you absolutely could turn into a bat that would fit in very well down here. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would like to do? Uh, yes, and I'm going to uh, fly... Uh, a little bit ahead and see what I can see with uh, 
with my bat eyes in the dark and see what's making that noise. I will let you roll with advantage on your perception check. They rolled a big old one uh, to try and see you. Again, I will say this freaking level up die. It literally is, it's always 20s and ones. It's like she giveth and she taketh away here. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's my perception. Uh, 26. Uh, you see up ahead a group of seven creatures that are very much like sniffing and looking around and coming your direction. They are terrible looking things. Um, they, you in your adventures, you have seen things that look like a rakasha, which are humanoids that have heads like tigers, but otherwise more or less bodies like people. Um, these are those if they were made out of flames. Uh, instead of having like the orange of a tiger skin underneath, it is almost like it is on fire and their clawed hands are on fire too. And each of them is holding a black blade with red arcane writing down the side of it. And they are very much looking around and sniffing and they are speaking to each other um, <laughs> in a language that actually you understand. Uh, they are speaking infernal. It so happens you can speak infernal. Tiefling, tiefling, tiefling. for the win. Tiefling, tiefling life. Uh, what are they saying? We must keep this place safe. We will destroy the drow when they return. None must disturb the master. Um. Okay. So can I, if I. Again, new bard spell. If mm -hmm. I project image of myself right now, can I project an image of myself in tiefling form, even though I'm still in bat form, or will it project an image of me in bat form? You absolutely can. And there's also a chance that you could just fly past them. They don't seem, if they have noticed you at all, uh, they don't seem to be reacting anyway to a bat. So you've got options. Yes, you could do that major image and engage with them. You also could probably, probably just go past them if you chose. Either one. Uh, I'll go past him. I was gonna pry for information, but if like if the, if they are undisturbed by me completely, then I, I might just like eavesdrop for another second or two to see what other information I can get out of them, and then uh, continue to fly by. You know, I'll just kind of I'll, I'll I'll perch for just a second uh, right above them uh, from the ceiling, and kind of you know I'll, I'll nestle in my wings and act like I'm like bat grooming. Hashtag fly casual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me see here. Um, let me just double check something that Hazaron can do. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing to tell him he can help you in a way that he cannot. He essentially twice a day can read the surface, thought, surface thoughts of other creatures. He can detect thoughts. He has enough charges that he can do it twice. Um, so if you wished to, you can actually just sit here and listen, completely valid, but twice a day, he is capable of reading people's minds. But again, it is just the surface thoughts. Like he can't dig for things, uh, but he's like essentially aware of what they're thinking. Um, and by extension, him being aware means you are aware if you so chose. Uh... I'm going to hold on to that and I'm actually just going to listen for a second because like if it, I, I feel like if there's a dragon up here that I'm going to be coming into contact with, I might have to read that guy's thoughts more than once uh, to figure out if he's going to eat me or not. So uh, I'm going to save, I'm going to save Hazron's mind reading abilities uh, for a little bit later and just because these guys seem like they're kind of like lower level cronies like that i feel like whatever's on their mind they're probably just going to be saying to each other outright anyways they look like they're in the middle of something so either their their minds already preoccupied with whatever they're doing uh and that's probably what i'm gonna hear or they're they're about to you know just say what they're thinking anyways a oh, fair yeah. assessment uh as they are talking they're like ah oh, those accursed drow they never give up we finally broke their lines. I wonder if they'll return to free their prisoners or not. It doesn't matter, really. They'll all burn in the fire eventually. Then you see they very much start creeping into the room, into the direction of the prismatic wall. Hmm. I'm I will, gonna... I will, 
also just say as an aside, again, you're a very experienced adventurer. You know, almost nothing can get through the prismatic wall. It is, uh, it is the, the quintessential immovable barrier. There are ways, but it's like she essentially has like locked off the exit, more or less. I'm gonna fly closer into the, the treasure uh, room towards, towards where that is, where we think the dragon is, and I'm gonna squeak uh, at at my sword, and I'll be like, ah, she's she's got the prismatic wall. She'll be all right. But in bat, so it sounds like. But he knows what it means. Uh, it's I didn't know you spoke fluent bat. Uh, as you are flying through here, what she didn't tell you is this is a gargantuan structure. You basically are at the base of a mountain. Uh, <laughs> you are flying through here. You're like, mm, there's halls and tunnels and passageway and sub passageways and sub halls. And it's just like, there's probably hundreds, maybe thousands of drow lived in here. Uh, she very much was like, oh no, he's right over there. Just go in there and throw hands with him type thing. Uh, <laughs> that is not the case. <laughs> you realize this would have been a sprawling dungeon crawl for a, a group of adventurers to like fight through. Um, she might have neglected to mention that in the sales pitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Kind of wish she would have gave us a map uh, in here. Um, hmm. Is you are sort of flying through here in your in your baddiness. Um, you see all manners of creatures in here um, that ignore you completely again either they don't see you or they don't react to you uh in any meaningful way i mean again you're in the deepest darkest depths of the underdark and you're a, a bat so is, uh, you're by no means out of place um and quite frankly the way they've rolled uh not only have they either not noticed they've looked right at you and just cho chose to not believe you were real they have successfully disbelieved in bat um, but well, I got some of those northern bats. That is true. It's a, ah, uh, they get in your hair, lay eggs. Um, okay. As you are flying through here, though, it, you do get to the point that you see uh, a thing that you are not accustomed to here. Um, it looks like uh, what was uh, an old elf at some point. Um, but it does not look like a drow. Like it looks like a standard elf with a uh, pale skin and like white milky eyes, sort of uh, standing at a section that splits and goes off into multiple rooms. Essentially, almost like a like a rotunda, like a almost like a roundabout for foot traffic, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is just standing there with a the staff, and it's got its head tilted slightly, listening. And it looks like a drow? It does not look like a drow. It looks like a standard surface elf. Oh, a surface elf. Okay. Mm -hmm. High mm. elf. Hmm. But it does look very old, even for an elf. With white, milky eyes and sort of grayish. It's, it's uh, blonde hair is starting to give way to like pure platinum with age. And, and they there's, a, and there's a, round, a roundabout behind it? they are standing kind of right in the middle of it. Like if there was like a big domed room that kind of branches off into multiple tunnels, essentially, <laughs> and it's right in the middle of it. Uh, do I have any way to figure out which tunnel the dragon's down and get past this guy? So you might have some options. Let's see here. Um, you've got just plain old perception, which covers everything. Uh, and you have a, a not insignificant perception bonus. Um, you've got, I'm going to look at some of your stuff here too. Uh, most of your features and traits very much lend themselves to violence, of course. Um, I mean, that's the best thing to lend yourself to. That is true. Also, um, oh no, there it is. Never mind. I was uh, about to tell you something that isn't true. Um, it looks like for you, either reading someone's mind or just plain old perception, or you also have a very, very high persuasion. 
find a, I apologize. If you could find a reasonable looking sentient, maybe you could just ask. <laughs> I, I thought about that with the first group, and I'm thinking about maybe talking to this guy, but he looks really scary from what you're you've described. So I'm kind of a, I'm afraid to talk to him and give away my position and then be made before I get eyes on the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever would you mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm gonna. I, I'll do perception. I'll do perception roll to see if I can see um anything that like hints. Maybe there's a little coins or something leading down which trail he's supposed to be down. Okay. Uh, thirteen plus twelve. Uh, eighteen twenty-five. Twenty-five. Um, as you are here in sort of this uh, uh, I'll say you don't actually enter into the roundabout you're kind of off from it you do with a 25 here sort of a gentle kind of from one of the tunnels maybe like something very big is sleeping I'm going to fly down that tunnel and I'm going to stay as close to the top of the cave as I can in the shadows and just still fly, fly naturally. Is you through, you do see this blind person does very much like rotate their ears kind of up towards you, but they, and even they rotate their shoulders as you're flying by, but they don't do anything to stop you as you take off down the tunnel. Um, when I get closer, do I, uh, do I see the dragon? More importantly, do I see the dragon before it sees me? <laughs> that is always the $64,000 question, right? Um, uh, one second here. I just need to look something up. Uh, I'm all like, from how far away can a dragon eat somebody? Oh, wait, sorry. This isn't voice to text. <laughs> Uh, as you are flying down the tunnel, uh, again, uh, give me another perception check here. No! Uh, that's, uh, I rolled a four, uh, but it still comes out to uh, 16. I was about to say, you know the house rule, one always fails and 20 always succeeds here, but uh, unless you're that poor orc, 20 gets you thrown through the floor, you know, when you could have just lost an arm wrestling contest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, is so it was 13 total, see? uh, for uh, no, 16. 16 total. Uh, mm -hmm. as you are approaching, you definitely uh, feel the heat increasing in here, and you do see just mountains of gold. Um, you can see there were neat shelves that were set up with uh, things uh, organized properly that have been burst and shattered, essentially. There were jars of coins and stacks that had been like orderly arranged that have all essentially been knocked over to create just a big pile out of. And as you approach, you do hear a thunderous voice that you hear as much as see say, Don't die. Little tiefling, I can see you. Uh, and I'm going to say, then it shouldn't matter if I hide or not, if you can already see me. And uh, and I will uh, polymorph myself again into... Uh, can I polymorph myself to look like a dragon? Like, not as big, of course, but like me-sized, but a dragon that's like me-sized? <laughs> Absolutely, you can turn into a you-sized dragon. Uh, what color dragon would you like to turn into? Um, I'm going to do like a... Uh, silver and uh, gold. So it's like mostly silver, kind of like iridescent, uh, mm -hmm. white and silver. And then the tips of my scales will be like a nice copper uh, uh, gold color. Um, and still with my uh, glowing, glowing yellow eyes. So you can, so basically you, you can turn into something like a little bigger than yourself. So you turn into like a roughly horse sized dragon, which again, is still very small for a dragon, mm -hmm. but you know, <laughs> and you land, it's like, 
that is no I'm and i'm going to i'm going to bow to the dragon never in my time have i had someone approach me in such an unusual manner and up near the ceiling you see two bright blue eyes open in the darkness further than even you can see um you realize in here otherwise it would be midnight black you couldn't see anything you like you wouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face if not for your dark vision but whatever it is up there is further away than you can see but you very much than you can see with your dark vision but you very much see these two blue eyes open up near the ceiling uh you um you want to come down and talk friend are we friends, Tiefling? I mean, I don't know. You're like big and it sounds like you like to fight and uh, it sounds like you have an interest in treasure. So um, I, usually when my interests align with people, I like to consider them friends. You hear... Uh... What's your name? Oh, um, uh, they call me Nasira Davari, uh, a legendary uh, bard uh, and fighter. Mm. I, I like to I like to rough people up a lot. I'm really good at it. You hear? <laughs> And out of the darkness, a gargantuan blue dragon comes down and lands and sort of like rears up and like flexes its wings out. And you can see its beautiful blue scales still has almost a gold pattern uh, under its breast. And it stands up very proud in front of you and says, Nasira, I've heard of you. I did not know that Dragon Slayer was a part of your legend. Oh, oh, it's, it's uh, well, it's not really. Um, I've never slayed a dragon before, and uh, well, I don't fully intend to today. Um, I was uh, hoping to have a little chat. Um, we don't intend to slay the dragon. <sighs> Uh, hold, hold on a second, and uh, I'll reach into the back, and I will pull out uh, Hazaron, and I will uh, set him in the floor next to me, and uh, I'll go, this is Hazaron. Um, he's not always friendly, um, uh, but it's uh, part of his charm. It's just just uh, don't take it personally. Oh, this should work out wonderfully. Some smarter adventurer will recover me in this dragon's horde and, and i'm know, going to slip I'll... my hand over hazaron's mouth or wherever i think his mouth is and just reach and i'll just look at the dragon i'm like just one sec just... I, I will tell your story That's <laughs> the lips curl back on the dragon and you see a slight crackle of lightning sort of go over its face that you think in other species might have been a satisfied puff of smoke and this one is just like a crackle <laughs> um yeah so uh I, I heard um that you had uh, uh come into town recently and uh, might have run some people out of their homes in the pursuit of uh, treasure. It sort of looks at you for a moment and then it changes. It changes into what looks like um, uh, an aging elf, not the same aging elf that you saw in the hallway out there, uh, but a what would look like an old elven woman. Um, 
not uh, wh whatever lies past matronly, you know, somewhat near like a crone, essentially. Uh, uh, Nasira, uh, again, she'll kind of bow in respect. Is, she she does that with, a, you know, anybody that looks like they're older and more powerful than her. She's got her, her wits about her, at least, that she's like, oh, okay, like, you've earned it. All right. You know, she'll she'll put her put her hand on uh, on her sword and kind of kneel down. She does sort of look at you like my name is Hazareth. Have you heard of me? And uh, you can give me uh, a history check to see if you have. Ah, uh, it's eight. Nope. Could have been anybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, no, I, I, I have not. I mean, well, like I've kind of heard of you, but not your name. And I, I heard of you from someone who sent me here to. Uh, well, they sent me here to essentially get rid of you, but like that's not that's not what I do. I don't like I don't violence first and ask questions later. I always like to at least chat with people, but like I, I told her I'd, I'd take care of it, but like, that's, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. I'll figure out what I'm going to tell her, but, but, uh, but that's all I've heard of you. Just, just what she told me. So of one side of a story. So I'm not quite sure how accurate that is. You are wise tiefling. Did I, do war against these accursed drow yes did i come here and take their treasures in this palatial abode and declare it my own yes i don't understand why the standard business dealings between one such as me and those such as them would involve one like you. Hmm. Well, again, like I said, they sent me here to uh, uh, put a hurtin, uh on, on a dragon. Um, mm -hmm. You do not appear to be a dragon, at least not entirely. Um, maybe just sometimes. Uh I just thought that it would be easier for us to speak like this. You were courteous enough to take on the appearance of uh, one of ours, so I just thought this face was good to speak with you. Oh, okay, that's fair. Um, yes, well, uh, th well, they sent me here to, to get rid of you, um, but... I think we could work something out. I mean, you, you, d maybe they let you keep this place, but hear, hear me out. You give back the treasure. Now it's a long game. It's a long game. We're still going to get the treasure back, but they're not going to try to kill us. And they're going to willingly give it to us. How? Okay. So I happen to be incredibly godlike strong, right? Okay. There's a thing. Not a lot of people believe it, but it's a thing and it's real. Um, I sing songs about it. I'll, I'll regale my tales upon you sometime. You'll love them. Well, some of them. Some of them I'm still working on. They need better bridges, key changers. A lot. It's just a, some, of, some of the verses are a little wordy, um, but I'll work on that. Um, but I think if we give them the fight of a lifetime, but we'll, we'll rig it, right? We'll rig it. Um, and, uh, and you, you, if you win, you get to keep this whole place, um, and uh, and we'll do a, a fighting ring. Well, we'll we'll do shows regularly, and and you and I can be wrestling buddies. Uh, and they'll come in and they'll pay tickets and they'll throw gold, uh, and 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 they'll 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 give us all of their treasure, and they'll do it willingly just to watch us fight. Uh, but uh, we'll rig the first one. You'll win no matter what, so we get to keep the venue. Um, but uh, but we'll give we'll give their treasure back. That way they can give it back to us and not want to kill us for it. First of all, OOC, I love this. I love Nasir with my whole entire heart. I just, I just, I'm here for all of this. Second of all, roll persuasion. Let's see if the, what the fates. Uh, that is a natural twenty. 
I love Nasira too now. <laughs> I know, B. Dave, you thought this was going to go one way. <laughs> I'm like, but hear me out. If no regrets. Here's the problem. Hoisted by my own petard, I myself just mentioned mere moments ago, 20 always succeeds. Um, hmm. 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 Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So while you're talking, Hazaron in your mind is like, oh, God, you're going to die here, and I'm going to fall into the clutches of some burly dwarf with a god complex. <laughs> Why are you always so negative? Because <sighs> I'm always proven correct eventually. You yeah. Very valid. are making this uh, pitch to Hazareth, and she looks at you and she says, let me get this straight. You want me to become a performer with you and make money from shows that we will rig the outcome of? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. I mean, you like to fight and hoard treasure. I like to fight and hoard treasure. They like to watch shows of people fighting each other and hoarding treasure. So everyone wins. I agree on one condition. We have to make it quite a show. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. She, I mean, you know, I, the, when you tell people dragon fight, like, I mean, you know, you assume a certain level of, of quality and, and caliber of a, uh, well, a, a certain amount of fire. So, yes. She extends a hand to you and smiles. Uh, I, I extend a, a dragon claw. And, and smile and bow my head. You really, when she grips your hand, she's, she's as strong as you are. And when you squeeze back, she's sort of like, oh. And she says, okay. <clears throat> I know what I want to do for the battle. How will you get word to them of that? Those are the terms. Oh, no, I know. I think I understand. Just follow my lead, okay? Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, I got it. Ready. <clears throat> <clears throat> she holds her hands out for you. She's like, um... This is gonna be fantastic. And you feel a jolt like, go through you. And you are in the sky falling. And up yeah. above you, you see rah, a dragon <laughs> appear and come and try and claw you while you are descending through the sky, plummeting towards the earth. Uh, roll initiative. Oops. <laughs> uh, let's see, I rolled a 10. Where's my initiative modifier? Uh, 15. Uh, she definitely goes first. And she attempts to claw at you. Well, actually, do me a favor. Give me a wisdom save. Oh, it's a natural one. She is terrifying. Like, you yeah. were, like, having this, like, great chat, and you're like, no, this is cool. This is all going to be, like, fine. And then you're like, ah, quit playing, quit playing, quit playing. <laughs> it's awful. It is awful. <laughs> you were like, I, you deeply regret all of your life choices <laughs> up until this point. Valid. Yeah. No, everything has gone wrong. Yeah. Um, she, uh, <laughs> uh, 
because uh, you are frightened, uh, you will have some uh, penalties, but like something like in the depths of your soul, it's like, this was the wrong thing to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And she immediately uh, tries to claw and bite you. Um, and you see, she really does like hit you hard. Like it bites into your skin for 16 points of damage. Like you very much feel her claws rake across you and like blood starts coming out where she ripped you. But then she very dramatically uh, narrowly misses and makes a point to like hump. Wait, actually, uh, like way past you, like bang. And you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> and then like claw. As you guys are like falling down towards the earth and you see like the ground is like, as you are falling with this dragon all over you, what would you like to do? Um, while I'm falling, can I teleport? You absolutely can. Um, I would like to teleport to, uh, to the dragon's back. Okay. Uh, so it looks like um, the I, I will, I never will, ending story. I'm I will <laughs> do you a solid here because you are a battle mage. You are capable of acting and casting a spell. So I will give you a chance to just physically grab her and see if you can just get on her back and then maybe save yourself a spell or for the rule of cool, do you want to teleport? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll see if I can grab her. Okay. That is athletics, by the way, don't exist. Floor dice, let's see, 16 plus 15, 31. 31, okay. You very easily, as she's like, hum, hum, and like bites past you, able to like uh, grab a hold and like sort of shimmy up on top of her. Absolutely. And you still have the ability to cast a spell this round or do something else. Because again, specifically as a battle mage, you get to do uh both things. Let's see. I would like to... And she dramatically snarls and snaps as you're trying to get on her back there. <laughs> uh, I would like to cast Otto's Irresistible Dance uh, <laughs> on the dragon uh, while I am on its back and uh, falling to the sky. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make I'm going to make the dragon dance. Dance, dragon, dance. You notice also uh, when you went inside, again, it was, you know, a, a gloomy overcast day. Like now, like a hurricane is forming. Like the clouds are thick and gray and angry and like lightning is playing all through them there. Um, she needed to beat. Let me check you because I have your sheet handy here as well. Also can verify that I don't think that's just this. Yeah. A lot of things are happening that I didn't know were things, and we're here. We're here. Um, <laughs> she very much... Well, actually, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, I want you to know something. She has an absolutely ridiculous bonus to her save, but I rolled a five, which is not enough. So <laughs> as you shimmy up on... What does a flying dragon dancing even look like? What is it? What do you mean? I assume the Macarena. It's, I, I, I was, I was, I was going to like, I was going to go more pop, lock and drop, but you know, like exactly. Like even she doesn't know, you know, which is awkward because she folds in the wings for the it's, eye and you sort of like drop 30 feet. It's a pop, yeah. lock and Macarena. Pop, lock, exactly. It's, it's a thing. You, you, you need wings and a tail to like make it work. Mm -hmm. And even she's like, what have you done to me, tiefling? <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> uh, do, are we able to get to the ground yet? Are we? <laughs> It's it, she technically has to use all of her movement to dance. So <laughs> she, are we crashing? Yeah, kinda, kinda. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna dismount in, right before we get to the ground. You're, you're, you're coming in hot. Yeah, you're coming in hot. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna still leave the spell up, but I'm gonna right before we get to the ground as we're coming in hot, I'm gonna peel off and roll off, tuck and roll into the shrubs. As you guys are coming down, you do see like arrows and things coming up from the ground to see this is like lightning crashes and stuff and like silhouettes you on the back of this creature with your sword out while it's flailing around. And give me an ath athletics check to see if you can land safely as she's coming down. Uh, 18. 
Uh, you do jump off and uh, land safely. Uh, she also... What? I just, I literally roll with disadvantage and roll two 20s. So <laughs> the dragon also <laughs> like coming down, plunging into the trees, like pulls up at the last second and like unleashes her lightning breath to cut a swath through the woods and just like land like a G. Mm -hmm. And you see she like kind of goes like... <laughs> And breaks out of the uh, out of the dance and just goes, her voice booming says, "Nasira, hero, come to attempt to destroy me and take what's mine, but I will break you here in the sight of sentience, both human and drow." Uh, and I will. Uh take out my ukulele from my back and I will, I shall defeat you creature for I am Nasira Bard, goddess Bard. As I'm picking away at the, the ukulele, uh -huh. I will destroy you with rock. Give me uh let's see. <laughs> uh, Give me a performance check. You and uh, and I'm, I'm going to make sure I, I won't be looking at her when I say that. I'm looking at the the rest of the crowd of people that was like shooting arrows. Like it's still, like I'm totally saying this is a stage performance. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a dirty twenty. Ah, oh, rock my one weakness. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she like very much like curls back away from you like she's defenseless. Uh, but then she does lunge forward and uh, again gets you. Uh, she misses with both claws, but mm -hmm. dramatically tail slaps you uh, for 15 points of damage. I mean, it hurt like she lays it on you, <laughs> sends you like flying into hitting into a tree. And she turns and looks at you and is like, Rock will not be enough to save you from me. All will tremble in fear of Hazareth, the almighty. And she breathes her lightning up into the air. And when she does, lightning comes crashing out of the sky. Super dramatic. Uh, I would also like, uh, when, when she hits me and when I take the damage, I'm going to jump with the hit to make it look even more so. Like I got <sighs> into the wall, like I'm going to throw myself into the, yep. the well, hopefully cracking it behind me. So oh, yes, yeah. sure. very dramatic slumps mm -hmm. over and you hear <laughs> and you see the matron next to you and she's holding her staff like very much like with her brow furrowed. And she says, Nasira, I've come to assist you in destroying this creature. Are you all right? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be like, no, it, it needs to be a fair fight. We must do this the right way, one-on-one. -on -one. And I uh, am going to run towards the dragon mm -hmm. uh, and I am going to cast... Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cast uh, uh, the green flame blade uh, mm. and I'm going to uh, hit hit Dragon with uh, Hazron with, while green and flamey. So uh, roll, if you happen to get a crit, you will actually get a, a um, uh, another attack this round. It's, I do not. It's, uh, you, you have a significant bonus. So basically, let me double check something here. Uh, actually, she's got a pretty good armor class. So uh, what did you get? I got a five. Uh, believe it or not, that is enough for when you're swinging Hazaran, but just, just, uh, mm. you come charging into the clearing and again, the two handed sword erupts into green fire and you come and you see that she very much turns what you can see as her most armored point on her shoulder as the blade bites in dramatically. And again, Hazaron hits very hard. So you roll uh, 2d6 plus 2d6 plus 11 plus 3d8 
<laughs> to see here. But Kev has run. Uh, 2D6, and then what is it? And 3D8. And then plus 11 to all of that. 3D8. I only have 2D8. I know. Why is life so hard? Okay, so I'm rolling 4D6. Mm hmm. Let's see. That's 11, 14 plus 11 is 25. And then 3d8? Yep, this is the green point. Yep. Nine, 10, 10. Plus another 13 for the 3d8. So 38. You smash into her, and as you are quite familiar, Hazaron inflicts deep, vicious wounds that are black and jagged and don't heal. And the green flames leap up all over her. And you notice the matron turns her eyes away from the how bright the flames are. And you very much hear people, oh, wow, wow, wow. And the dragon howls in pain and like falls back dramatically. And she looks at you. And you hear her saying dr draconic. Ow, shit. <laughs> I, I stand over uh, her and I hold uh, the blade up high over my head and I go, Creature, you fight nobly. Shall you continue to fight? And you win. You will return the treasure, but keep the cave. Shall we fight? And, and I win. You will be gone forever. You see the matron is just standing by the side. Actually, give me another performance check. Let's see how well, how well you sell this here. And, and and I do look down at her and the, the eye that's looking away from the crowd. I, I wink at her. <laughs> I'll let you I'll let you roll. I'll let you roll with advantage here. Uh, oh, with advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm just knocking all my dice over. I don't exist. Uh, the first roll was the better one. Um. Uh, performance, uh, 16 plus 8, uh, 24. 24. You see every, like a hush falls over all of the people. Because as you can see through the trees, essentially like soldiers have come and gathered. And you see some of them are humans from the nearby village and also displaced drow that wouldn't normally be up on the surface are starting to kind of like gather in the tree lines. And they have bows and arrows and you see their hands are glowing uh, with spells and things when the dragon looks around and you hear her voice again she's like yes one final blow to decide victory uh and and i wink at her again knowing that i'm going to uh like throw myself down the hole no matter what <laughs> you see the lightning starts to form and she shakes you off of her and she like jumps back onto uh, all fours and rears back and you see a column of lightning come flying out so strong it drives her back in the mud from the force of the lightning that she's shooting at you. Because uh, I, I'm going to uh, turn uh, Hazaron around so that his face is looking at me. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm going to use uh, the back of his blade kind of like a shield and let her lightning kind of slide me in superhero pose all the way across the ground towards where I'm going. <laughs> You notice as it flies at you, it kind of is like slightly off. So you're able to do this. It's like essentially all the woods next to you are just vaporized. <laughs> you are pushing backwards. Um, and you hear people like, oh, what are you doing? oh what are you? and you hear the matron yell out, strike now, strike now, Nasira, destroy the beast. Uh, and I will uh, lift uh Hazaron up uh oh, out of the way of the lightning like I'm going to strike with them mm -hmm. and I'll let the lightning take me right uh in the chest yeah. and yeah. uh and kind of blow me down into the hole and the dragon just roars ah! and you hear everybody's like, ah! and the humans and she says fear not mortals Nasira fought bravely and honorably. I will 
live up to our bargain. The mountain is mine. The treasure is yours. Pointing towards the drow. And you see the matron comes scrambling down into the hole that the lightning has like blasted down into the earth and sees you there burned and broken. And it does hurt a lot in this year. You didn't have to work so hard to sell it. Yes. And I, yeah, I will yeah. cast on myself. I think I have a healing spell in here somewhere. Well, I believe I do. Matron, when she finds you, puts her hands on you. And you feel a uh, regeneration coursing through you, and your mm -hmm. wounds start to close up over ah, you. Who, yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and I, I do stand up very bravely. I'm like, ah, no, this is really nothing, though. It's, uh, yeah, pad worse. <sighs> Are there any others on the surface like you? Um, do, uh, do, what do you mean? Heroes. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah there's uh, lo lots of them. Uh, uh, not just like me. I am, like, the strongest and, like, you know, the prettiest and, like, you know, the smartest and, you know, all that. But, you know, there, there, there's others. There's, there's, uh, like, I am a god. There are demigods. How will we get back in there to recover our treasure? Oh, um, uh, well, uh, I, I, I'll bring some of it up for you. Uh, we can, um, I can do a thing. Um, and I, I uh, so how does teleport work? I just want to be clear before I'm like, I can do this thing and get it. And then I can't, because I have not teleported either. These are all uh, new spells. It, it is, it, you, you would take some trips to, to get the, the stuff out of there if you so wanted. But while you are talking, you hear the dragon roar. Nasira, face me one last time. Uh, and I, I, how far away am I? Does it, like, oh, you just got like knocked down in a, in a hole. Like, I mean, you could scramble out of the hole and the dragon's like right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll scramble out. You hear its uh, voice echoing in your mind. I figured I would give you a grand exit. What do you say? Oh, uh, sure. What do you mean by that? Come closer and find out. Uh, and, like, and the dragon very much is like out in front of him, <laughs> arms up and wings and snarls and things, even though it sounds all calm in your mind. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, I will. I will come out. To ensure our accord is recognized by man and drow alike, you will escort me back to make sure all is as it should be. And she extends a wing down towards you. Uh, and I will uh, hop up on the wing and, uh, and I will hop up on her. And as you sort of settle in, she's like lifts off slowly. And you do hear she grunts from like the wound you inflicted <laughs> on her. Like it is like you cut oh. her down to the meat. But oh. quite frankly, she scratched you up too. And she did. I'm a, and I'm gonna give her a greater restoration uh while while I'm back there if I'm close to where I got her with the blade. That is necessary because otherwise the wounds Hazaron inflicts will not heal. <laughs> so uh, as she's lifting off, you like the lightning erupts behind you and silhouettes the two of you against the sky as you hear all of the people, both human and drought alike, erupt into cheers as she lifts off with you on the back of the dragon heading back to the mountain. And I, I wave at all of them and I'll be like, well, we'll bring your treasure back. We'll be back. Thank you. Good people. And Hazaron's voice echoes in your ear. How do you keep succeeding at these crazy plans? I do it just to spite you. <laughs> and that is a good place for us to stop. Yeah, no, Nasir is the best girl. Yeah, there you go. See? 
cards. There you go. Ah, ah, ah. I do. I like my bard girl. Oh, she's she's OP. I like her. I cannot believe you're only freaking 20 to convince the dragon to become basically a pro wrestler. I am what I am. Uh, I regret I, nothing. I would like y'all to know this. This happened similarly in a home game with her her druid character, where there was an Abelath, a great Abelath, you know. So like, there if, if you're not familiar with D and D, they're these ultra intelligent, terrible things. And she's like, I hit it with feeble mind, and I'm like, There's no way that's gonna work. It has like int bonuses out the wazoo. What do I roll? What do I roll? Natural one. 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 I I'm booped like, the suit. I made the big brain dumb. Yeah. That's that's our life. That's what that's what that's what happens uh, when when she plays there. So uh, yeah, that's I should have known. I should have known. I, I should have known. I don't even blame you. I blame me. I don't even blame the dice. I blame me. Yeah. I have I have no regrets. Yeah. No, that is uh, <laughs> it's just there you go. Uh, all right, I'm gonna take just a quick scan here to see if anybody else uh, hit us up with any questions. But while I am scanning, and again, if anybody uh, has any more questions that, were, that we haven't answered, lay it on us one more time with a big capital question in front of it. But in the meantime, uh, May, you are everywhere doing all the things. Where can people find you? Oh, uh, yes, so um on uh, Wednesdays, uh, we'll have a little show called Denver by Night here on Q Times. Um, that is uh, Vampire uh, the Masquerade. It's an all-girl cast, and I love my girls very much. Uh, an all-star cast there. Um, on Thursdays, uh, all, uh, I'll see, all, uh, that is on D&D &D, uh, Twitch, and that is uh, A Darkened Wish. Uh, and then uh, that is uh, by, by you, B. Dave Walters, uh, based off of your comic and DM'd by you. Um, and on Fridays, uh, we have uh, Anarchs of New York with uh, Level Up Dice, also DM'd by you. Uh, and uh, that's where I get to play my spooky La Sombra girl, Avedon. Um, I do love her very much. She evil girl and she's awesome. Um, and uh, Sundays... Uh, I, I is uh well you're still doing the the one on one shots here but I think uh, Long Beach is on break for a minute right yeah today that was it for Long Beach uh mm -hmm. with, right before this with Joey mm -hmm. yep so uh so a uh, little little break usually Sundays is Long Beach but but no more Long Beach for a little bit but um also at night times uh and sometimes the wee early hours of the morning um you can find me uh, streaming on Twitch. Uh, I'm playing through Bloodlines right now, um, and then probably Skyrim after that, and uh, and I've got it set up uh, now soon, almost set up. I have to figure out how to get the um, capture card to work uh, to, to get um, the Xbox through OBS, but then we'll be able to play Elder Scrolls, and B-Dave will be able to be in, and we'll have like a layout, and you can see us both while we're playing Elder Scrolls, which will be super cool and uh, super awesome and a new thing. Because usually it's just you staring at me and hearing Dave talk. So now you'll be able to see us both. I mean, um, really, that is kind of the best of both worlds. When they can see and hear you, but just hear me, that is just like the optimal experience. You know what I mean? Like oh. more, more of that. No, but the two sexy is always better than one sexy. Two is better than one. Um, the uh and uh yeah also uh if you would like to play a game with me and have me dm um uh, as storyteller uh that i have a patreon where um i run games uh and uh you find all kinds of uh, cool behind the scenes stuff um really cool merch um and uh it, it first look updates at a lot of things and uh, also i do like cosplay pinup and stuff like that so there's uh photo packages and stuff a lot of a lot of content on there so we do a lot of things uh oh yeah and occasionally uh swag packs with like minis and stuff which i forgot to grab on the break because i'm like super special like that it, you know, is it super close? Because we already outed you for wearing the pants. So if you can just run and grab one, there's still time. But otherwise, we'll, we'll get it next time. They, they are very high up on a ah. shelf. And it's it's not just me in the pants. It's me uh, tripping and falling over things while trying to... <laughs> You know that now, if you want to see them that bad, become a patron and maybe you'll get one. You know, that's 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 the solution there. Uh, I will say uh, thank you for this. Thank you. Glad that uh, we got to be there for your first uh, your first taste of bartery there. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, Nasira is the best girl and you should play her all the time. She's great. Um, 
Next week, Luis Carrazo. I know I said I wasn't going to say what we're playing, but he confirmed via email while we were talking here. Uh, he is going to bring back the D&D character that he used to play with Mercer and Talazin and all of those people before CR was CR. So that's how far back he goes in D&D. And I'm not going to tell you anything about the character. Oh, Just gonna like, we're we're going to get to meet him here. So we will be back here for that. Uh, next Sunday at 1 PST. Uh, again, B. Dave Walters, I'm everywhere. The Electropunk graphic novel's going now. Uh, please uh, count Kickstarter. Please support if you can. Uh, signal boost if you can. Um, so let's see. Sunday, uh, Long Beach is on hiatus. We'll be back when LA by Night's back. Got one on one shots to uh, to help fill the void in our lives. Uh, Tuesdays, Silver and Steel, six o'clock on DD Beyond. Wednesdays, I am not on Denver by Night, but shout out Denver by Night. Uh, Thursdays, it was just announced. I'm going to be on. Uh, that. You're, sometimes you're on Denver by night. Inadvertently, yes. I'm I'm the stunt the stunt storyteller for Denver <laughs> by night. Uh, <laughs> Thursday, uh, we have Roll in the Family, the Slumbering Forest at three Pacific. Then at five, this is episode ten of A Dark and Wish this Thursday, the big finale. Uh, although we will be returning for season two, we'll probably have a little break. I don't know, but it'll be weeks, not months. Uh, we'll be back for more Dark and Wish Friday, Anarchs of New York, like you said. Uh, Saturday, I would say I sleep, but that's not true. I run Patreon games. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I forgot of something, but I'm at B-Day Walter. Uh, I'm or were. Oh, yeah. Somebody chat said Beyond Heroes, but you're not on Beyond Heroes. Anymore. I am not on Beyond Heroes. Mm -hmm. I'm on really Silver, now on Silver and Steel. Steel. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you give your socials? Uh, you might have. I was, I was reading, I was scaring for questions. Oh, Where can um, people find you? I did not. Uh, my socials on everything um, is at Melee Damage. So Melee, like right here, which you see below me, and uh, and Damage uh, after that, all one word. Well, we're going to get out of here because Q Times has to get ready for Court of Corvus, which you should hang out to watch. And uh, thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you next week with Papa Potence. Bye, guys.